I'm a recruiter within security. I've been in recruitment since graduating, which was some time ago. Uh, I have been within Barclay Simpson now for four years. Prior to this, I had a career in, in recruiting IT, uh, coders, support staff, and operational risk, which lends nicely to security. Um, now, growing and retaining your team um, with, as a hiring manager, in my opinion, comes two distinct challenges. One, the challenges you face in retaining the talent you have, and number two, the, talent, the challenges you face in uh, attracting the right uh, talent out there. Um, a lot of this information I'm presenting and the statistics come from our market report, which for some reason is free. I keep saying that we should charge for it, but we do it twice a year and we've done it for the last 10 years and it's accessible on our website. So. Um, if you are interested in advancing your career in security, I, I highly recommend that you look at this. Um, even though I've had clients that don't use us, um, I see them all the time in InfoSec and they say, thanks for that, um, thanks for that market report. I managed to get the whole team pay rises based on um, the salary surveys within there. So certainly have a look and it's a good idea to see what you're worth within the market. Um, there's no irony about it that um, perhaps the most famous uh, man in technology came out uh, with this phrase and it's something that is um, reciprocated by the hiring managers I speak to. Can you hear me okay? Is that okay? Okay. Something I speak to with the hiring managers out there, I don't just advise them on the right people to find, but also where the market is going, what they should be paying their people, and also what their competitors are paying their people. Assuming I'm not working with their competitors, on many occasions I do sign um, NDAs, um, so I'm not going to get into too much detail about what's going on out there in some cases. Okay. Now. This is a candidate-driven market. Now, what I mean by that is that for every candidate out there looking for a position, um, he or she has a choice of three or four opportunities out there. So there, are, so there are many opportunities out there and more opportunities within security than actual candidates and talent. We pretty much um, know this already. This is a statistic we're probably used to. Two million unemployed, uh, sorry, excuse me, two million vacant positions within security by the end of 2019. Um, these are um, figures by ISACA. Um, we will see if this is the case, but where are these positions coming from and why are there so many uh, opportunities out there? Well, primarily because of market um, conditions. Now, about this time last year, we saw a dip in vacancies being released. I personally put that down to uh, Brexit. But now we're seeing a lot more FTSE 100 companies um, on new programs and new initiatives. At that point, a lot of the roles were paused, a lot of the programs were paused, but because a lot of these roles are becoming defrosted, as we call them, from a frozen state, it has a trickle-down trickle um, effect. Now, one of the questions we asked is, um, do you believe your skills have become more valuable? Now, these uh, goals out, this, uh, the response is from 3,000 security professionals. And as you can see, there's higher confidence within the market of security professionals with 81% stating that their skills have become more valuable. Well, they're absolutely right. It has become more um, valuable. Why has it become more valuable? Well, one of the reasons for this is cloud. Um, cloud implementations from a security perspective. We can see that um, we're expecting this to grow um, 247 billion approximately this year and we're steadily en route to that. Now with this growth needs talent, okay? And many of the positions I'm working on um, um, has to do with um, infrastructure as a service and software as a service. So personally, the roles I'm working on and the roles my team have been working on has been certainly uh, focused on um, cloud, particularly from a contract perspective, which I'll get into a little later. Other areas of growth from a technology perspective? And we did mention, uh, we did hear about uh, GDPR. That's one of the big growth areas um, we've seen. Um, I think 4% of uh, global um, annual turnover is certainly an incentive for hiring managers to um, to actually get signed off for positions. A lot of the times the CISOs would come to us as our almost backup contingency plan. Sometimes they go to the big four larger consultancies who are charging uh, 
as they would put it, extortionate fee for consultants who would provide them with remote support, whereas I can provide someone with data protection experience and individuals I've placed before who have worked with organizations on their GDPR well in advance, um, so at a pretty much fraction of the price, and more importantly, an individual that can be there on site five days a week as opposed to just um, being there as support um, as and when. Now, this has mainly been around the early stages of GDPR, data discovery. Effectively, where is our data held? What does our contracts look like? Um, what third parties have our data? And um, uh, you know, how, how, can we, how can we record this? Um, this, we asked our panel, if you were to consider looking for another job or to go to an interview, what would be the most likely reason for this? Now, in our other areas, we have areas of compliance, audit, risk, and treasury. Typically, as you'd expect, it has been salary that has been the primary motivation. Here we see it's not salary this year, it's career progression. One of the reasons for this is because we know that security not only is a stable area, it's a thriving area. And relatively, security practitioners are paid well, and we've seen this grow year upon year. So often, a lot of these guys are looking for something a little bit more than money. Now, a lot of the people I've spoke to, I've spoken to, I've um, placed technical um, from, um, from um, logarithm configurers all the way through to chief information security officers. Now, one of the trends I've seen when it comes to career progression is that some of the most technically advanced individuals perhaps are looking to move out from technology, perhaps are looking to move into a managerial sphere. And if that opportunity is not provided internally, they will look elsewhere. Also, job security. They know they're stable. They know that if they are in a position where they lose the job, they can find another job, okay? So that's one of the large aspects of it. Um, this is actually, of all our areas, security has been the most unique in this. Um, our findings have been quite groundbreaking. In terms of compliance, we see the traditional things. People are looking for more money, more job security. With security, the money is there and the job security is there. So they do look for um, other aspects. Right. This is also quite interesting. Location. Um, historically, we've seen the majority of the roles within security and the growth within London and the Southeast. So we, someone should have um, had the slides for the last two years. Um, London and the Southeast at one point was 83%, um, while the um, rest of the UK was 17%. We're seeing the rest of the UK catch up to this. Now, why this is important in terms of retaining your staff is that if your employee were to change location, move home, the odds are that they would be able to get a job close to home, okay? And we haven't seen remote working access yet caught up within the security field. This is because a lot of the things they're working on is very confidential and not many high-end managers. You know, the, uh, we're seeing a trend where there's not, the percentage of individuals working from home within security has not increased year on year, as in other industries it has increased. Some people have put this down to the fact that it's perceived that they need someone on site in case of an immediate breach. But please bear in mind that this is related to physical security as well, all aspects of information security, not just cyber security, as um, we heard before. Um, so, salary increase, far smaller than last year. Career progression is certainly the, um, most, um, is certainly the most important and uh, aspect that they are looking for. Um, Another, another reason that it's harder to keep your talent, if you will, is that there are more people like me on the market. There are more headhunters on the market. The more individual, I mean, I've been in the market for some time, but you have organizations now recruiting teams so that they don't need to use recruiters to headhunt specifically within security. Um, also, you, LinkedIn is a great source to attract talent. I think 92% of hiring is done um, online. It's done via your own um, um, either LinkedIn or your Facebook uh, profile. So there's more competition out there in order to keep your staff. It is uh, certainly a lot harder. 
Um, now, in terms of threats that prevent you from growing your team, the, well, the good news is that um, there's only been, uh, like there has been a 1% reduction this year in security professions who have changed jobs in the last 12 months. Again, we do put this down to uh, Brexit. The, we still have the levels of uncertainty now, but if we were to run this um, result at the end of this year, I think we'll see a dramatic increase in the number of individuals um, that have changed uh, jobs. Oh, well, save that one. Um, this is quite important. Um, in terms of keeping your staff, one of the problems of, excuse me, instead, in terms of finding new staff, one of the problems you, that we are finding is uh, GDPR related increases. Now, the first example um, is a role I worked on in 2016 when the asset manager, they were looking for a security data analyst, and this was a contract position. A year later, they were looking for the exact same position, but it was uh, related with, uh, to uh, GDPR, and that carries a premium. So the individuals that they were able to secure for this position had GDPR experience previously, and um, as you can see, the second position was actually for a legal firm in which the salary for 2016 went up significantly, 230K. Um, this is, I mean, I could go on and on and on about this. Um, we have individuals who, one of the advantages we have of being such an established recruitment firm is that when someone sends me their CV, I've seen their CV already, more, you know, typically I've seen it a year ago. So I can look back on the CV and I can see trends and they can say to me, oh yes, uh, date, I've been in data protection for four years. Mm -hmm. Well, they haven't because I've seen the CV from a year ago and there wasn't an ounce of data protection on there. So we're in a position to at least vet um, individuals. So it's, it's, it's a tricky one because there is a premium associated with GDPR and I call it the GDPR gravy train. Um, but there is a real, real cost associated with it. So in terms of growing your team, if it's got anything to do with, unfortunately, J uh, data protection, forget GDPR, you're gonna have to um, pay a premium um, to that, unfortunately for some, but not unfortunately for the individual. Um, another aspect is contractors. Now, I do mention contractor rates here for a reason. When I speak to a hiring manager, they tell me a temporary requirement they have. Let's just say it's, a, I don't know, let's just say it's a identity and access management business consultant, um, sorry, business analyst, and I would give them the market daily rate, let's just say 450 pounds a day. So, oh, our people are on 50K. They start pulling out the calculator, oh, that, yeah. And they, they, they just can't comprehend how much that is. Well, that's what the market dictates. As a contractor, it can be a very lucrative way to make money. But on the flip side, typically, you don't work 12, day, 12 months of the year. You're not paid your holiday. You're not paid bonus. You're not paid sick pay. Um, but saying that it can be very lucrative and a lot of hiring managers just haven't caught up to the fact that there's a contract market out there and there is a lot of money to be, uh, to be made out there. A lot of people leave firms to become contractors. The irony is that I've had guys call me and say, I want to, we call it the dark side, okay? I want to join the dark side. Um, what's your notice period? Three months, that's not going to do. You're going to have to make a decision yourself. If it's a one month notice period, people will wait for a contractor. So I've had people resign specifically to go contracting without a new opportunity to go to. Now, I know, well, I'm pretty confident they'll be okay, but I can't tell them that. It's a heck of a responsibility, and who knows how the market might turn. Ironically, sometimes they go back to the place they were working in in a permanent capacity as a daily rate contractor. So the point I'm making is that if you're a high manager and you are not open to the fact that there's a huge contract market out there, it will affect the growth of your organization. We have contractors who come from different industry sectors using different tools who have been in many scenarios that you yourself are trying to find a permanent person to fill that position. But because you're not, this is not a personal thing, because you may not be commercial enough to realize that there are individuals out there with different skills across different industries that may help you. Uh, we, find, we find that this, this, th this is a factor in trying to um, grow new staff. So I would advise individuals who are looking to grow the team to be open to contractors at the very least, at the very least interview them. Um, 
The biggest threat to growing an organization, I find, is the actual hiring manager themselves or the organization they work for. You have to ask yourself, how robust are your recruitment processes? Probably my biggest client is an investment bank in Canary Wharf. And their recruitment processes for managers was seven stage interview process, seven stage. Now, in the first six months, I made no placements with them whatsoever because by the third stage, the individual they wanted had already gone somewhere else. Some of the smarter managers were able to put that seven stage and spread that out over over two stages. I used to joke to the, con to the um, candidates and say, look, make sure you have your breakfast because this is a two-day interview process worth um, three to four hours per day. But it worked because they were able to secure the people quicker. So if you have a laborious recruitment process, someone else is going to have a slicker process and is just going to be sexier with it and be, be able to engage the right um, individuals. Again, it goes back to my previous point. It's easy to assume that salary is the reason that people look for positions, but it's not. Often it's career um, progression. Also, another aspect um, that will, another aspect in terms of the process is uh, sometimes I speak to hiring managers, say, look, I know you're recruiting this position. I've got the person with the AWS skills. He has implemented cloud um, in this organization, that organization, you know what they say, say to me sometimes? You're not on the PSL. My response is, I don't want to be on your PSL. I'm just trying to present you with this individual who I know is fully capable of doing the, the job. I've placed him in his last five roles in a contract capacity. So sometimes processes can get in the way. And often these guys, I see them advertise the same position, often for six months onwards. And then often they go to consultancy, which is uh, far more expensive. So be wary that your own processes can um, stop you. One of the other phrases I can't stand is I need someone to compare him or her with. If you think an individual is right for a position and you're waiting for someone else who's on par, um, you may very well be waiting too long and lose that um, individual. Right. In terms of discussion points, I find that um, there are certain myths that we need to debunk. One of those myths within security that may apply to other areas is the overvalue of salary. Okay, I think great, great emphasis should be put on career progression. Now, these guys do it well. Um, one of the other myths, and someone alluded to that area, is that individuals within security, often in a senior capacity, need to come from a security background. That's not always the case. I've um, had CISO say to me, look, I'm looking for a second in command. I'm looking for someone. I said, what kind of background are you looking for? Well, someone that can communicate with the business. She said, someone from an operational risk background, someone from a governance background, someone from an insurance capacity and um, that's not necessarily technical. Yes, can understand the technical elements, but I need someone to sit in front of the board and relay the importance of security to them. So there is an emphasis of that as well. Now, the reason I put the big four logos up here is because um, the big four have started to think outside the box in terms of recruiting new talent, and this is particularly important to the students. A lot of the times they don't go for individuals with security degrees. As long as you have some sort of technical capacity, can be people facing, these are great, great environments to grow your security career. And for recruitment consultants and hiring managers, the, unfortunately for the big four, they're also very good headhunting ground. So um, after a few years within consultancy, um, we have, um, you know, you, you, the odds are you're going to be headhunted very, very heavily and uh, you don't need to travel 90% of the time, which is, um, which is always a plus. Another myth, the Brexit myth. I did mention Brexit before affecting security hiring. Yes, it did. That is a fact. But we are seeing greater programs of work defrosting and more opportunities coming to the market. And security, the security market is confident about Brexit, Brexit as you can see. 78% say that Brexit has not affected their work and life whatsoever. And exactly 78% has um, said that it's not affected their uh, job security um, whatsoever. So to conclude, key factors that affect your ability to retain and grow your security team. Awareness of market motivators. Be open-minded, realize that it's not all about salary, it's about career progression and what you can offer your people. A robust and commercial hiring process 
is there too much red tape going on there and what can you do as a hiring manager to address that? Um, and use of contractors where necessary and that's just being commercial and having an open mind and taking people from different environments. And also, I think a market ally is important. We have these market reports. There are many others out there. I think it's important, oops. I think it's important to keep abreast as to what's going on on a regular basis because it changes so much. Thank you very much for having us. Cheers, thank you.